Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Valbara by Hachette. Valbara is a 2-5 player set collection game in which players are going to be playing cards from a handful of heroes and then trying to gather the right lands that will score them the most points across 9 rounds of play. And 9, nine rounds might sound like a long time. It's 9 turns. This game plays in 15 minutes. It's a, what does the box say? It says 25 minutes. Honestly, I think I don't think it's that long. It's like a 15-20 minute game. But either way, across 9 turns you're going to be drafting 9 lands, trying to be mindful of their scoring objectives. Occasionally the various characters you play will also have ways to gather you points as well and the combination of that is how you're trying to score as many points as possible in this game. Like I said already, I think I said already, it's a two to five player game, but let's go ahead and walk you through how this plays. Each player is going to have their own identical hand of 12 cards. Those 12 cards, you're going to be playing, uh, I'm brushing this the wrong way, you're going to be playing nine of those 12 cards across the course of uh, play, although one of the cards does let you pull back a character card, so maybe you'll be playing the same character card twice if you're I was going to say lucky, but tactically planning around it, I should say. The general idea is you're going to be trying to play a card. So, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and play cards randomly from these hands because I'm not going to overly think it. But, well, I'm not going to think about it at all in the case of these opponents over here. But you're going to go ahead and reveal those cards. Every player reveals those cards, and then the lowest initiative is going to gather a card. This is actually great to be able to show you a rule over here. So the lowest initiative, 5, gets to select one of these three lands from the bottom row. Effectively, you always know the current lands and the next round of lands that are going to be coming out as well. So right now, this player over here gets to choose one of these three. And honestly, it's not a great time to be choosing those, but maybe we'll go ahead and go for this one. I guess this will give us two points, because this particular land is going to give us two points points for every single different type of land that we have, including itself. So we'll go ahead and grab two points from these uh, points over here, and then place them face down in front of us. The next players go over here. Now they both played an eight, and I also say uh, ability-wise, this person over here gains three points per forest in the realm. This would be a forest. This is a bad early game card to play. I'm not playing tactically, I'm showing you how the game plays, but every character has an ability on it. These other two characters, the midwife over here, says take a character card back from the discard pile to your hand. Again, a terrible first play. It was randomly drawn from both these decks over here. But right now they would be able to pull back a character card, which I mentioned before. Not a great first play. But they both played the eight, so how do you resolve that tie? On the back of this card over here, you're going to look at which color breaks ties right now. And right now it's purple, green, blue. Blue goes before red, so blue will get first choice from these cards. Not that it matters, they're the same card, actually it does matter, because this card over here is going to go ahead and say for every card, for every red card in front of you and both your neighbors, you get a point, so he's going to get one point. But, because red's grabbing this card next, they're going to get two points because of the fact that they grabbed it second, so they count the card in front of their neighbor, because in a three-player game, everyone's your neighbor. In a three-player game, all reds are going to count, it's not going to matter. At higher player counts, the reds will be more about who got those reds, but lower player counts, it's not going to matter. That's basically the round. We go ahead, we put these cards into the discard piles for each person, we move these down, we go ahead and reveal the next cards, and then we go ahead and continue that for nine rounds of play. Now, I'll show you how the various land scores, so you have a sense of that, and then I'll show you a few abilities from the cards, and then we'll go into uh, my review and opinion and all that. So, to the lands. Forests are going to score based on the points on it, which are between three to six points. Uh, these over here, these prairies or whatever they are, they're going to score already, like I said, for each red you have and your neighbors. Mountains, your second mountain scores 10 points, and your fourth mountain scores 20 points, so it can be great if you're getting four mountains, otherwise not necessarily as good to go for those. We have these rivers over here, you're going to count the value of the character you played, maximum six, so if you play a two, it's a two, if you play a six, it's six, if you play an eight, it's a six, effectively for this card, and you multiply that by the number of rivers you have. So you have to play a later card to get them, but if you do get your hands on them, it can be very, very strong, because you can get a chunk of points if you have a bunch of rivers. Over here are these prairies. They're going to score you two points per prairie you already have. So your first one will be two, your next one will be four, onwards and so forth as you go. And then I believe I'm missing one. We already covered the huts. I think I'm missing one. Am I? Or does that everything? We covered the huts already. Why do I feel like I'm missing one? I don't, I guess I'm not missing one. That's all, that's all the various land types in the game. So you have all those six land types. As far as the abilities, uh, again, I'm just going to show you a selection of these over here. But you're going to have things like the uh, carpenter. Three points per forest in your realm. You have the hunter. If you play this before your neighbors this round, if you play before both your neighbors, you gain three points. We have our tracker. Swap a land from the first or second land row with the top card of the deck. 
giving you a bit more choice as far as how things will play out. You have your farmer. It's a 12, which means it's the last to go, but you double the reward for the land you add to this realm this round. That can be incredibly powerful if you want all of the cards on the table. If all three cards are good for you, that's a great time to play the 12 because you're going to double the points you get. That's going to be just a small selection of the various characters you have. And that's basically how you play Valvara. Across nine rounds of play, play a character, take a land, well, play a character, execute your player power, take a land, repeat for nine turns, and see who has the most points at the end of it. Which brings us to the review starting off with ease of play. Ease of play is pretty easy. This is a very, very fast game to teach, to play. Like I said, the box has 25 minutes. I think that's a slow game of Valbara. This is a quick playing game. Teaches in three, four minutes. It's easy to set up, easy to tear down. It is very, very easy and accessible in all ways. As far as what I like, don't like, and conceal is not liking, starting off with what I like, which is fast-paced set collection. It's fast-paced set collection with a degree of mind think, mind games, around which card is the right card to play, based on the cards on the table, meaning based on these lands that you're trying to gather, but not just that, based on the lands that are in front of your opponents, what do you think they are most likely to play? Because you know that Jennifer over there, she's going for rivers, you know that. She already has a river, therefore she wants that next river, but she probably wants to play a card that's closer to a six because a higher card is going to score more points, but a higher card means she's less likely to get it, so maybe she'll play the five. Maybe she'll play the five, and maybe if we go ahead and play this card, we can either get it out from under her, we can hate draft the card, or alternatively at least benefit from the player powers in play, because like, for example, one of them rewards you three points for every, or is it two points? I have to remember, it might be two points, for every player who played an odd value card that round, so maybe you're trying to predict around that. There's definitely a degree of planning around what other players are going to do, so you are able to look at your 12 cards, think through what players are likely to do, try to react or plan accordingly, while being mindful of your own set collection as you go through the game. So it's got, you know, variable set collection as far as the various player powers, the various powers of the lands themselves and how they score, but there's also giving you those uh, those character powers, and the combination of the two is effectively the game that is Valbara. As far as things I don't like in the game, the set collection is not super interesting. It's fine, but it's not super interesting. It's like, hey, here's all these different ways of scoring a few points, but none of them are like crazy interesting, like the prairies. Two points for every prairie you have. Okay, so it gets more powerful the more prairies you have. Uh, the mountains, well, there were the ranges, the more, more you have, the better. The forests, the more you have, the better, especially because of that forest or the ranch or whatever they are. The rivers, the more you have, the better. The huts, well, not the more you have, the better. One's fine for that. The mountains, the more you have, the better. They're all just a version of the more you have, the better, and with slight variances as to how they score. So so it's fine, it's just not super interesting. And then similarly, the player powers are not super interesting. They're a fine set of player powers. I didn't feel they were amazing, like, oh my gosh, like, how are we going to do this? Oh my gosh, I just skipped your turn, or I did this, or I did that. I mean, the 12 is one of the most interesting ones. You double your scoring, but you have to have the right situation to benefit from it. They're all fine. Everything about the game is fine. Nothing is particularly stand out about Valvara, about the player powers or the land powers. As far as what I can see others not liking, there's definitely an aspect of it feels random with that mental mind thing. If you don't like games where you're trying to think through what your opponents are going to do and then try to plan around it, and then maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, maybe you called it correctly, maybe you didn't. I mean, that's a big part of this game. It's half the game is that. The other half is the set collection, but you're trying to think through, okay, great, what is the right play given what they're going to do? That is effectively the game of Valvara. As far as final thoughts on this one, I heard a lot of good things about Valvara going in, and I definitely was excited to play this one. And it's not a bad game. To be very clear, this is not a bad game at all. But I can't say it super impressed me either. I think there's a lot of games that do this type of thing, whether it's the player powers on the mind think, or whether it's the set collection, and because neither of those two aspects were particularly engaging to me, they were both fine. They were both totally, totally fine, but we live in a world of amazing and great games, and frankly, fine is often not good enough. To me, this is a three out of five. It is totally fine. I would happily play it if somebody wanted to, but I can't see myself getting particularly excited about it because I feel other games do this type of thing better. What it has going for it is it's really fast paced set collection with player powers and mind think. In terms of what it's doing, it does it very, very quickly and more accessible than other games that do it better. So if you want quicker and more accessible over a better game, I think Valbauer has that. But if you want things that do this better, I think there are games that do this better. So for me, a three out of five. And speaking of some of those games, for recommendations, I'll say that Citadels, which is a game that Valbara was definitely compared to Citadels for me. I heard it compared to Citadels a lot. I think it does, Citadels to me has more interesting decisions around how things play out while being in the same space, but it is a more complicated game and generally takes more than like closer to 45 minutes to 60 minutes to play. So again, takes more time. So this not as much of a filler, but I think it does more for you. And then similarly, Libertalia is going to be another one. This also has that very much Libertalia aspect when you're trying to figure out what you want to take and which cards to play and your opponents all have the same cards. You're trying to think through what they're going to do. 
Very much feels like a little mini Libertalia when you play through this one. Although again, Libertalia is going to be a longer game. In any case, then until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, I hope you have a good one.